the James Webb Space Telescope cost $10 billion and consumed countless person hours to be designed. It is also the most complex and powerful space telescope ever built by humans. So, expectations are high for this brand new eye in deep space. Astronomers have been studying the universe with the telescopes on the ground as well in space for years. But with the new James Webb Telescope, we have this one shot to look at the universe in a different way. And that is if the telescope actually works and unfolds a whole new view of cosmos. So what has James Webb found about the edge of the universe? Let's talk about it. Welcome to Space World. In today's video, we are going to talk about a terrifying new discovery about the universe made by James Webb. So if you want to know more about it, then stay with us until the end of the video. The James Webb Space Telescope is the next great space science observatory following Hubble. Designed to answer outstanding questions about the universe and to make breakthrough discoveries in all fields of astronomy. According to its creators, Webb will see farther into our origins, from the formation of stars and planets to the birth of the first galaxies in the early universe. Now that it is finally in space, the world's largest and most complex space science observatory spent six months of commissioning in space, and at the end of commissioning, Webb delivered its first images. And we have to totally agree with this, those images were mind-blowing. Webb carries four state-of-the-art science instruments with highly sensitive infrared detectors of unprecedented resolution. According to the Space Telescope Science Institute, the best images from James Webb will start to appear now as it has calibrated and finely tuned all its instruments and mirrors. The powerful James Webb Space Telescope is also expected to take amazing photos of celestial objects, like its predecessor, the Hubble Space Telescope. Luckily for astronomers, the Hubble Space Telescope remains in good health, and it's probable that the two telescopes will work together for James Webb's first years. James Webb will also look at exoplanets that the Kepler Space Telescope found or follow up on real-time observations from ground space telescopes. It's equipped to peer past the cosmic dark ages and document the first specks of light to flood the universe, see stars form behind dust clouds that Hubble couldn't penetrate, zoom into supermassive black holes with unparalleled precision, detect galaxies invisible to the naked eye and begin cataloging planetary systems in search of habitable exoplanets. While other space probes, such as the 1989 Cosmic Background Explorer, have technically studied a greater distance into the universe than Webb will, this telescope was designed not to see the beginnings of the universe, but to see a period of the universe's history that we have not seen yet, said John Mather, senior project scientist of the James Webb Space Telescope. So, every time you look at the moon, you're looking back in time, because light doesn't travel instantaneously. The farther the light source, the longer it takes for its light to reach you. Down on Earth, if someone across the room switched on a light bulb, it would take an infinitesimally short time for its illumination to hit your eye. But if someone were to stand on the moon and switch on a light bulb, it would take 1.3 seconds for you to see it back on Earth. In essence, every time moonlight reaches your eye, you're looking back in time by 1.3 seconds. And that's just the moon, some 238,855 miles away. The James Webb Space Telescope can look much further into deep space, about 13.7 billion light years away, which means it can look 13.7 billion years back in time. That's just 100 million years after the universe was born. Therefore, as it searches for clues to what happened right after the Big Bang, it will use natural cosmic flashlights called quasars to watch the epoch unfold. Thought to be powered by supermassive black holes, quasars live in the center of galaxies and emit immensely luminous light. If you want to study the universe, you need very bright background sources, said Camilla Pasifisi who is affiliated with the Canadian Space Agency and works as an instrument scientist at the Space Telescope Science Institute in Baltimore. A quasar is the perfect object in the distant universe because it's luminous enough that we can see it very well. 
Plus, thanks to a long list of high-intensity equipment, Webb won't just be taking pictures of the distant universe as is. Webb is programmed to employ infrared imaging. Arguably the most crucial feature of Webb is its infrared imaging capabilities, the primary reason it can capture such rich, unfiltered glimpses of the ancient universe. So, as cosmic bodies get farther away from Earth, along with the rest of space's fabric, the light illuminating them stretches out simultaneously, resulting in a phenomenon called redshift. Redshift has to do with the way light on the electromagnetic spectrum exists in wavelengths, which sort of looks like curvy zigzags. On one end of the spectrum, we have blue light, and on the other end, red light. Blue light wavelengths are shorter, so you can think of them as having a ton of narrow, pointy waves on the zigzag. Red light has longer, stretched-out wavelengths. As the universe expands, quasars' wavelengths of blue light slowly stretch out, like pulling on a rubber band. And as they get longer, they become redder. Once those wavelengths get really far on the red end of the spectrum, they'll enter what's called the infrared light region. Unfortunately, the human eye can't see infrared light, and Hubble can only see a portion of it. But Webb is designed for the job. It will pierce through dust clouds to study objects in space illuminated by light in the infrared region. Because infrared information can also reveal physical properties, Webb will identify whether molecules like water are present on faraway planets. And that's just the beginning. While there are some hypotheses about what Webb might find, like the way particles once reionized to form stars, the discoveries it makes will likely be of things we never even thought to ask about. We think that the tiny ripples of temperature other telescopes like COBE observed were the seeds that eventually grew into galaxies, Mather said. But because those probes weren't armed with infrared imaging, we don't know exactly when the universe made the first stars and galaxies, or how for that matter. That is what we are building JWST to help answer. This is why the edge of the universe is clearly not some 13 billion light years from Earth. It is estimated to be much beyond that. So, what is the farthest astronomical object humans can see? One thing is that there are some objects in the universe that we might never see. About 16 billion light years from Earth, this marks the current cosmic event horizon of the universe. So are we there yet? Nope, not yet. This distance is the upper limit of light ever reaching us if it originated at that distance today. This implies beyond 16 billion light years, the expansion of space is faster than the speed of light itself. Obviously, the light will never reach us, as it will have to through a relatively expanding universe. This also signifies that any event that may have happened today beyond the cosmic event horizon will not be observable by us no matter what. But we can see even further through telescopes like the JWST. The most distant galaxy ever observed is the GNZ11, located about 32 billion light years away from Earth. And this is it for today, guys. What are your thoughts on today's video? Share your views with us in the comments below. Also, don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and ring the bell icon for more amazing videos about space. And thank you for watching.